just recently, news broke out online that Rocky Johnson had passed away. Many of you know that Rocky Johnson was the father of Dwayne Johnson, and many of you also know that he was part of the first ever African American tag team to hold the WWF tag titles. So today, I've decided to change the schedule a little in order to pay tribute to the late Rocky Johnson and highlight some of his other key accomplishments within wrestling. Real name Wade Bowles, Rocky was born on August 24th, 1944 in Nova Scotia, Canada. He was a descendant of plantation workers who immigrated to Nova Scotia from the southern United States after the War of Independence. At the age of 16, Rocky moved from Nova Scotia to Toronto where he trained to be a boxer, revealing in his book that he sparred with Muhammad Ali and George Foreman during his amateur days. Pro wrestling though fascinated the young Rocky Johnson more than boxing. Pro wrestling would indeed be Rocky's calling card. Johnson began wrestling in Eastern Canada, a thriving wrestling scene during the 60s and 70s. It didn't take long for Rocky Johnson to get recognition. He had a tremendous bodybuilder look, but along with this, he was a naturally gifted athlete with an incredible amount of charisma, something that his son, The Rock, would inherit. Rocky Johnson's ring work kind of blended the boxing style of flurries and showmanship with athletic and fast wrestling, something that greatly attracted audiences very early in Rocky's career. His finishing move, for example, was three consecutive drop kicks, pulled off to perfection each and every time. So we can see here that Rocky's first three months within wrestling saw him work exclusively in Nova Scotia for the Provincial Sports Association. We can also see that he was quite hard to beat early on. What's interesting though is when we look at the next two years, Rocky only worked 10 dates and more striking is that Rocky would never really get booked to win once he began working for NWA affiliated promotions. There were time limit draws but still he didn't win. It would take Rocky another few years before he found himself being booked in more favourable outcomes, mainly in 1968 when he began working for the Atlantic Grand Prix wrestling promotion. It was here that Rocky began picking up wins and soon enough, Vince McMahon Sr. would book Rocky Johnson on shows based out of the District of Columbia. Rocky's early days in the WWF saw him get a ton of wins over a short period of time, with Vince McMahon Sr. clearly seeing something in the young Canadian. Much of the early 70s saw Rocky working for NWA promotions around the California area and it was really during this time that he became a main event performer. He would become a top babyface in Los Angeles and find himself in a big money drawing feud with classy Freddie Blassie. In 1970 alone, Blassie and Johnson faced off around 20 different times which goes to show how well their feud was generating money. In 1971, Rocky Johnson teamed up with Peter Maivia for the first time and through working with Peter, Rocky met Peter's daughter, Ada Maivia. The following year, the couple had a child who would go on to become the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Rocky Johnson was already married when he became romantically involved with Ada Maivia. 1972 saw Rocky Johnson work for NWA Big Time Wrestling, moving on here from NWA Hollywood. Here, Rocky formed a quite successful tag team with Pat Patterson. Pat and Rocky won the NWA World Tag Titles in 1973, forming a friendship here that would actually shape the future of sports entertainment. When The Rock wanted to get into pro wrestling, it was Pat Patterson who Dwayne Johnson called on the phone to try and get his foot in the door. I'd believe that Rocky Johnson told his son to phone Pat Patterson before calling anyone else within the World Wrestling Federation when it was time for The Rock to get booked. According to Patterson's book, Pat went to see The Rock in action and he immediately called Vince McMahon afterwards, saying, and I quote, You want to see this kid, not tomorrow, but yesterday. Pat Patterson and Rocky Johnson dropped the NWA tag titles the following year to the Von Brauners. From here, Rocky would split his time between singles action, tagging with Pat and also tagging with Chief Peter Maivia. 
1974 would also see Rocky moving on to the NWA affiliated Georgia Championship Wrestling, capturing the vacant NWA Georgia Heavyweight title on the 6th of December in a match against Buddy Colt. Rocky also had NWA World Heavyweight title matches in Georgia against Jack Briscoe but was unsuccessful in capturing the gold. For a short period of time, Rocky held both the Georgia Heavyweight title and the Georgia Tag titles at the same time, teaming up with Jerry Briscoe here to capture the tag titles, but his reign as a double champion didn't last long. Just one month after winning the tag titles, Rocky dropped the Georgia Heavyweight title to Abdullah the Butcher. Rocky would then move on to the Florida area, working for Florida Championship Wrestling, where more NWA World Title opportunities came, but also Rocky came up short. Notable here though is Rocky's slew of matches against Harley Race that also drew big money for the territory. Texas and Memphis were the next destinations for Rocky Johnson who, by this point, had become a much sought after superstar thanks to that athleticism and charisma we talked about previously. In Texas, Rocky feuded with Terry Funk in some well received matches for the NWA Championship and in Memphis, Rocky feuded with top dog Jerry Lawler in more matches that done big business. Rocky even became the king of Memphis for a short time, winning Jerry Lawler's crown much to Lawler's dismay. When Rocky won the NWA Southern Heavyweight title from Lawler in late 1976, he went on to defend the title against names like Ernie Ladd and Abdullah the Butcher before eventually dropping the title back to Lawler in November of 1977. Rocky finished up then and went back to Florida. 1980 saw Rocky Johnson work a tour with New Japan Pro Wrestling, staying in Japan for a month and working nearly every day in the process. Soon afterwards, Rocky began working the Carolinas with a new ring name, Sweet Ebony Diamond. Sweet Ebony Diamond wrestled under a mask and, all in all, Rocky's time in Mid-Atlantic was quite successful. He won the NWA television title in a well-received match against Greg Valentine, which started off a feud between the two, kick-starting a well-remembered series of matches which saw the NWA TV title change hands back and forth. By the time late 1981 arrived, Rocky had dropped the Sweet Ebony Diamond character and moved on to the Pacific Northwest Territory. After spending a year in Portland wrestling, Rocky found his way to the WWF and man, he was booked favourably during his first lot of months here. Rocky got wins against the likes of Buddy Rose, Mr Fuji and Jose Estrada within his first weeks in the company. In early 1983, Rocky was getting more wins against the likes of superstar Billy Graham and the magnificent Morocco. Rocky would also frequently team up with Andre the Giant in matches against the Wild Samoans while feuding with Don Morocco over the IC title, but it was his tag team with Tony Atlas that most fans will remember. Known as the Soul Patrol, Johnson and Atlas became the WWF Tag Champions on the 15th of November 1983 when they defeated the Wild Samoans in Pennsylvania. The Soul Patrol became the very first African American Tag Team Champions in WWF history here and they held on to the titles for around 6 months. While Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson have their place in wrestling's history books, in reality the two men didn't get along. As you can tell here, Rocky Johnson was a veteran by the time he won the World Wrestling Federation tag titles with Atlas, having worked for NWA promotions for nearly his entire career up to this point, and Tony Atlas was still relatively new to professional wrestling. This meant that Rocky Johnson was sort of leading the way, telling Atlas what to do and scorning him when mistakes were made, and along with this, Tony Atlas just wasn't a very good businessman. This led to a rough relationship between the two and Rocky Johnson said I met Tony when he first started and I tried to help him. He had the best body in the business but I can sum it up the same way Vince McMahon told him. You've got a million dollar body but a five cent brain. Once we became champions he wouldn't make small towns and he was hard to do business with. The Soul Patrol dropped the titles due to Tony Atlas being hard to work with. Tony was fired around a week after the Soul Patrol dropped the tag championships. Then in 
Rocky Johnson stayed with the WWF until 1985. He was still getting booked quite well, picking up wins against the WWF's midcard, but when it came to matches against the big names of the company, he was booked to lose. He mainly worked in Memphis after leaving the World Wrestling Federation, and he had his last pro wrestling match against Dick Slater on the 5th of December 1991. He did work a boxing match against Mabel in November 2003 though, where he picked up the win. After retiring, Rocky focused on training his son Dwayne. Johnson was initially against Dwayne becoming a wrestler, and he told his son that if he wants to train to wrestle, he would get trained properly. He would go hard on young Dwayne, he wouldn't let up just because they had a father and son relationship. Rocky Johnson did not go easy on Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson made his WWF debut at the 1996 Survivor Series and didn't look back, going on to become one of wrestling's most successful and popular superstars in history. Rocky Johnson would make appearances alongside his son during Dwayne's first months in the business. Most notably, Johnson jumped into the ring at WrestleMania 13 when Dwayne got attacked by the Sultan and Iron Sheik. Rocky Johnson wouldn't be seen again on WWF TV though after the Rocky Maivia character flopped in the World Wrestling Federation. Rocky Johnson then and his father-in-law, the High Chief Peter Maivia, were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2008. Rocky and Peter were inducted by The Rock. So all in all, Rocky Johnson's career can't ever be called unsuccessful. Going through each and every one of his title wins here, as you can see, would have taken an extremely long time to get through, but this gives an example here of just how successful he was, especially within the NWA. Rocky Johnson stood out as a charismatic showman who could back up his swagger with athletic ability, truly one of those talents in wrestling that was just fun to watch. He was a regional champion everywhere he went, he wrestled some of the biggest and best names in wrestling during the 70s and early 80s, and he was a box office draw. Promoters wanted Johnson in their territory, he was a sought after talent, and when he hung up the boots, he passed his knowledge on to his son who would go on to become a globally recognised superstar and entertainer in his own right. <laughs>